Many of you may be surprised to learn that Muhammad peace be upon him is mentioned by name in numerous ancient books, including the Bible. This video is a brief examination of a few of the mentions of Muhammad peace be upon him, either by name or by likeness in the 4,000 year old Hindu scriptures. The following is stated in a part of the Bhavishya Purana. At that time, a spiritual educator known as Muhammad arose among Malikas with his friends. So the name Muhammad is mentioned very clearly. What else? It is said that he will be a spiritual educator. Nobody has any doubts about this characteristic. Even those who do not believe in him admit that he has this characteristic. Apart from that, the term Malikha is strange. It seems very strange to say that he will come from someone other than Hindus. Why? What would Hindus have normally said if they had written it for themselves? They would have said he will come from among us, right? But on the contrary, the name Muhammad is mentioned, and it is said that he will come from a foreign country. In other words, he will not be one of them is a remarkable detail. In fact, this is not the only reference to Muhammad peace be upon him in Hindu scriptures. There are many more. The narration of Kalki and Avatar. But I read this from Al Pandit Vida Parkarash Upandayaya, and he is a Hindu scholar at the Allahabad University in India. And he said, from the writings of the earliest Hindu scriptures, there was to be what they call Kalki Avatar, the last of the avatars or the last of the messengers. This is interesting because these writings predate the Prophet. But he said there are signs of his coming. He said the Kalaki Avatar, he will be the last of all those that will speak on behalf of the Lord, meaning he will be the last messenger. He will be born in a desert land. His father will have the meaning of Vishnu Bahagat, yani the slave of God. Abdullah. He said his mother's name will be Sumani, which will be the peaceful and the calm one, Yani Amin. His food will be dates and olives. And that's interesting, right? Because I mean, each one of these will match Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will be from an honored clan, no doubt the Quraysh and Banu Hashim from them. He will be inspired by God in a cave. SubhanAllah, and his inspiration, his wahi will come to him in a cave. He will travel the world on a horse-like creature that will then take him above the sky. SubhanAllah. He will get divine help in battle. He will be born on the 12th of the month. And there are others, and he will be an excellent horse rider and swordman, and he will fight himself, and the help of the Lord will be with him in battles, and so on. These are not the only references. In fact, there are many more. In Shalokas, between mantras 10 and 27, someone named Muhammad who will come in the future is mentioned, which you see on the screen right now. His name is mentioned several times. Towards the end of this section, we see the following statements. My followers will be circumcised, without braids, with beards, who will make a revolution, call to worshiping allowed, and assimilate all religions. They will eat animals without performing elaborate Hindu rituals. An extraordinary term is used in a place further on. They will be known as Musaman, and they will deny deny the false religion. At this point, it is very clear as to whom these scriptures are referring to, which other revolutionary leader endorsed all of the following to his followers. Circumcision, beards, calling to prayer loudly. But more importantly, even these passages mention Prophet Muhammad by name and states that his followers will be known as Muzalman. Let's look at the next reference. And it's mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khan 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8. A Malaysia will come along with his companions from the desert and his name shall be Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Raja Bhoj will give this Mahadev Arab a bath in the Panch Garf and will welcome him with honor and address him with reverence and say, O oh, pride of humankind, you have created a great force to fight against the evil people. This prophecy of Bhavishya Purana Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8, it says that a Malachya will come. Malachya in Sanskrit means a foreigner. He will come along with his companions talking about the Sahabas from a Marusthal. Marusthal in Sanskrit means a sandy tract or a desert. His name shall be Muhammad, peace be upon him. Raja Bhoj will address this Mahadev Arab with reverence and say, O oh, pride of humankind. We know that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a pride of humankind. He further says that he will collect a great force to fight against the evil people. And we know that was done by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This prophecy refers to no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The prophecies continue in Rig Veda. In one part of the Rig Veda, the following is stated. Truthful and truth-loving, extremely intelligent, strong and generous, Mamach, who is the truthful and truth-loving, extremely wise, powerful and generous, has favored me with his words. He, the son of the all-powerful, possessing all good attributes, the mercy for the worlds, has become famous with 10,000 companions. 
The word mama here is remarkable because the word is derived from the root ma in the Hindu language, which means to praise, to glorify. When the prefix ma, which adds a passive meaning, is added, it becomes mama. Its translation turns out to be the word praised. The Arabic equivalent of this name is Muhammad. In addition, adjectives such as truthful, truth-loving, extremely intelligent, strong, and generous are mentioned here. They are seen in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, throughout his life with the unanimous agreement of his friends and enemies. And they are the attributes through which he is praised. In addition, remember that there was a phrase, the mercy for the worlds, in the text, which reminds us of a famous title of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Verse 107 of the chapter of Al-Anbiya, We sent thee not but as a mercy for all creatures. Another important detail, being famous with 10,000 people. Yes, he returned to Mecca, his homeland from where he was forced to emigrate in 630 with 10,000 of his companions. He returned and conquered Mecca with his companions who were ready to sacrifice their lives for him. Is the prophet mentioned in the Vedas? There's something in Hinduism called the Avatar, which is one sent down. Now, currently, most Hindus believe the Avatar is really an incarnation of Vishnu, but they have a concept concept of the Antim Avatar, which is the last one to come, the last one that will be sent. And they come when things are going wrong. So the last messenger is known in the Vedas as Narashansa, which is not as human. So it means that he's not a diva, he's not this demigod. And then Ashans is praised. So it's the praised human. And then is the prophet mentioned in the Puranas? Many Muslim scholars actually who studied Hinduism thought he was. Some of them argued that he was the Kalki avatar who comes in the Kali Yuga period, which is the last cycle. It's the age of uh, darkness and strife. Even though in Hinduism they believe that these recur, but this age of darkness and strife is the age of fitna. And in the Mahabharata it says the rulers become unreasonable, taxes levied unfairly. They no longer promote spirituality. God will not be discussed. Greed will be everywhere. Animosity will be amongst people. Religion will diminish with each passing day. People will have thoughts of murder with no justification. Lust will be seen as socially acceptable. People will be addicted to intoxicants. Spiritual teachers will abuse their students. People will no longer get married. Earthquakes will be common. The rich will dominate the poor. Sound familiar? The prophecies continue in Samaveda. The following is stated in the text. Ahmad acquired religious law from his Lord. This religious law is full of wisdom. I receive light from him just as from the sun. Ahmad acquired religious law from his Lord. The name Ahmad is mentioned so clearly. It is one of the names of the messenger of Allah, Ahmad. Then it is stated that he acquired religious rules from his Lord. And that's exactly what a holy book and religion mean. And the word Ahmad is even mentioned in other places in Hindu scriptures, including Samved, Indra, chapter number 2, Mandram 152. He is even mentioned as Ahmad in Yajur Ved, chapter number 31, verse number 18. In Rig Ved, book number 8, hymn number 6, verse number 10. He is also prophesied by name Ahmad in Atharva Ved, book number 8, hymn number 5, verse number 16, as well as Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 126, mantra number 4. Now we have to ask a very important question. How is it possible that Prophet Muhammad is mentioned in 4,000-year-old scriptures while he was born only 1,400 years ago? One possible explanation is those scriptures could possibly contain remnants of prophecies of previous messengers and the scriptures revealed to them. Whatever the case may be, these evidences further establish the undeniable fact that the Prophet Muhammad is a messenger from God. سنريهم آياتنا في الآفاق وفي أنفسهم حتى يتبين لهم حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق. We shall show them our signs in every region of the earth and in themselves until it becomes clear to them that this is the truth. 